Hello world, I'm back and this time I'm going to set up a cron task over on GitHub Actions. And the reason why I'm doing this is that I set up this little expense tracker in my menu bar. And I have a script that goes to my bank, here's their API, downloads all my expenses and saves that into Airtable. And then I have a script here that loads things from Airtable and displays them in the Mac menu bar. And you can read a little more about that here. I wrote an article about that uh, over at focusmark.org. <clears throat> so you can check it out if you'd like. But anyway, uh, yeah, so I decided for GitHub Actions because I think it's gonna be the simplest way to set up uh, a cron task. Other alternatives would be setting up my own digital ocean server and editing cron tab there. I don't wanna do that because if it for some reason breaks, then I'll have to fix it. Uh, I really want something managed, something where other people would be taking care of my server. <clears throat> Another option was Heroku, but I'm, I'm not sure, I haven't checked it recently, but last time I checked, I think I would have to pay for something like that. So with GitHub Actions, I have 2000 minutes a month for free, which means I don't really have to pay for this cron task running. <clears throat> I'll just get right into it. So I'm gonna go to my repo, personal finance and I'll go to actions. All right, so I'm gonna set up a Ruby, okay, let's go, let's just go back one step. I'm gonna set up a Ruby workflow. This is set up for like running your tests, but I'm gonna use it for something slightly different. All right, so it's gonna work here. All right, so this is set up to run on push. For now, I'll keep it that way, uh, but then I'll change it to be schedules task. Then we have the environment, which is Ubuntu, and we got steps. So first thing it does, I think, it's checking out Ruby. So it looks like, wait, wait no, 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 it's, all right. Wait, what? Okay, this is the first step where it uses checkout, which is just check, checks out all of my code. The second step is called setup Ruby, uh, which will grab Ruby at a specific hash it seems that's okay but I think I'll be fine actually changing it to what they suggest I think this will be fine <coughs> so this is a action provided by github setup Ruby so I don't have to worry about this at all this is totally under their control they'll just give me Ruby all right install dependencies I need that because if we look here at my gem file, I am using Air Record, which is a gem that deals with um, Airtable API. Makes it easier to work with it here. It creates um, an ORM-like object for me, expense, and then I can create expenses. I can, I can go and do like expense find and then create them, so that's nice. All right, now we'll change this. It won't be bundle exec, exec rake, We'll just do, and I don't know if this will work, but we'll just do ruby sync.rb. Okay, so I think that's it. We'll commit this to master. And it should be set up now. So it's set up to run when I push to my code base. Or maybe I can run it manually. Can I trigger it manually? I'm not sure. Can I? Doesn't, doesn't look look like it. It looks like I have to trigger it manually. So we'll just, uh, actually I made a change here. So that's, uh, all right, so I changed, I was I was moving my Airtable credentials from sync RB over to config YAML. I did that so that I could show you the contents of sync, sync YAML. Oh, sorry. I did that so that I can show you contents of sync RB without exposing my private keys. So that's a good change I can commit. I just gotta be sure not to show you <laughs> config.yaml. I'll do commit m and we'll say, uh, we'll say moved credentials from sync rb to config.yaml. We'll push that and now GitHub should receive that. Ooh, I have to pull first. And so now I push that and GitHub should register that and it should run my action. So let's just refresh actions see if it caught that push doesn't look like it yet oh here we go so it's running now or it's queued okay 
So this uh, action is called test, which I don't exactly like because it's not a test. It's not a test. We'll do it. We'll rename that to sync. All right, let's see test. So here we go, run tests. Oh my goodness, so it's working. You can see my expenses right here. Okay. Well, <laughs> that was a lot easier than I expected. And this will be a pretty short video. But let's just wait for it to finish. And I'm going to be very curious as to how long that takes. Okay, well, that, fin that just finished. All right. Wait, what's this? All right, so that took 49 seconds. So I think we can assume it takes about a minute for each sync. So let's do some math. If I have 2000 free minutes per month, but that's for my entire account, I'm not really using GitHub Actions yet for anything else, but still I'd like to save some of those minutes for other projects. All right, I got 2000 minutes. So if this thing takes a minute, I kind of want this thing to be up to date. So I'd like for it to run at least every two hours, uh, like every two hours. So that means it will run 12 times a day. Each time takes a minute. It gives me 12 minutes a day times 30 is 360 minutes per month. So now I've used up 360 minutes from my quota of 2000, 2000 free minutes and I'm still left with over uh, 1500. So I'm good with that. I think that's fair. I can, I can do that. All right, uh, well, it's, it's working. That's the great part, but we need to set it up to work not on push, but to be run automatically every two hours. So let's go f look for uh, GitHub Actions Schedule. Mm. Okay, these are all push stuff, webhook events. I don't care about that. Let's look for keyword schedule, schedule, schedule. <laughs> okay, scheduled events. Here we go. Let's click on that section. Schedule event allows you to trigger a workflow at a scheduled time. Mm, okay. Oh, here we go. That's easy. All right. So we'll actually keep pushing to master uh, because when I make changes, I kind of want to run it just to be sure I didn't break anything. And we'll add schedule and we'll do okay all right so we'll do dash cron and we'll put this in quotes and we'll oh wait I just close it let's go back okay so and we need to use a cron a cron string here so i want this to run every two hours okay Mm, how do I do that? I mean, I could set it up to run every hour. That would be fairly easy. For that, we would do like zero, uh, zero. So on zero minute, and then any hour, any day, any month, and any day of the week. That will make it run every hour. Uh, but I would like for this to run every other hour. So let's just see if we can just look it up real quick. Print cron tab run every two hours somebody had dealt with this before oh here we go wow okay at a minute oh past every second hour all right it works actually that's fine so i'm thinking uh for now i'm thinking i'm gonna do it every hour just to make sure it works and once i'm sure it works i don't know i'll just go for every second hour so okay so zero uh, every second hour and then like any day any month and any day in week great so let's commit this and let's make sure that github can understand it uh, updating sync action to run every second hour so we'll, we'll push that and we'll go here back to github and see what happens and I can't really test the cron right now because I'll have to wait two hours or something like that for it to work. Now it's running again because it's set up to run on push, but for the cron thing, I don't know. I guess, I guess I'll just have to come back in a couple hours and see if, if, if it had run again. 
since now. But let's just wait for this one to finish. Well, I guess this guy, that's it. This one took only 44 seconds. Uh, maybe one improvement would be to set up some kind of caching for all my, uh, for all of my like, dependencies. Let me just look that up real quick. Uh, GitHub actions, cache, bundler. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a way to do that. They have example. Oh, look at that. So could I just put that there and would, would that just work? Path vendor slash bundle. But if I go to, there's no vendor folder. So how does that work? Aha, uh -huh. what? Oh, very cool. Interesting. I mean, we could try this. I just want to see if this will make it faster. And also there's like, all right, let's just try doing that right here. Oops. So we're going to use cache. Hold on. At what point should I use the cache command? Oh, this is not useful. But if I look here, I need an example of like where in the workflow it is used. Example workflow, great. So they check out and then they, they call the cache thing. Um, they don't say if they had set up Ruby before or after. I need another example. Something with like Ruby being set up, but there's no such thing. They're just check out and then they call cache right after that. So maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll check out and maybe we'll um, maybe we'll use cache right after uh, checking out. Okay, so we'll cache we'll, we'll load the cache right here. Uh, invoking this one, I think that's just like copying files. So it doesn't matter if Ruby has been installed or not. Mm, I hope so. And then <clears throat> then we go back here uh, and when we do bundle install we'll just use what they do so we'll we'll do bundle config make it uh, install into vendor slash bundle folder and then we just install it I'm not sure why I need these two but I'll keep them so And this is like, this is not really that useful. It takes 44 seconds, which is fine. But if I can save a couple more seconds, I'd be happy because um, that, that means I would have more minutes left for other projects. Okay, so it's checking out now. <clears throat> it ran the cache action. Let's see what it did. Cache not found, which makes sense. Oh. Okay. So that looks like it installed stuff into vendor bundle, but uh, this like the next action hasn't been able to find them. Okay. So Ruby bundler custom path not found. Okay, I think I should say bundle exec Ruby. Let's see if that works. Bundle exec Ruby. We're gonna push again. And I wonder why is my fan so loud? I mean, I'm sure you can hear it, but it's too much. Okay, it's these two tools, OBS and KML Studio. 
let's do like OBS, okay. Screen recording and Camo Studio is capturing my video from my iPhone. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, it's gonna be that way. All right, let's just take a look at actions again and let's see if this might work. Run test, so it looks like something's happening. Okay, it looks like it's running, it's uh, loading my expenses. So that means my, well, let's just see cash now. It says again, cash not found. So let's just push again. Let's make some change. Just something, I don't know, just small change. And let's push again. And now it should, so it just finished an action successfully, which means the next run should use, it should restore the cash when I try this again. So let's just see if that happens. As you can see, this was 47 seconds. So that's the number we wanna improve. And let's take a look here. So it's running action slash cash. Let's see what it did. Oh, great, cash was restored. So that means this was probably super fast, one second. It didn't spend any time installing those gems. Great. That's exactly what I was going for. So that worked. And well, running tests is still gonna be pretty slow. So that's a bit of an issue. Um, how long did, that was 26 seconds. And then it, it looks like it's stored again, results of cache, but not in this case, because it was the same. So let's take a look um, how long that took. Looks like that was even slower. So, you know, that just happens. Means my cash thing didn't do much for me. And I think the reason is because there wasn't all, like the bundle installation wasn't that slow. If I had like 15 gems, it would have made a difference. In this case, didn't, didn't make any difference, but it's okay. Uh, this was still fun exercise to try and use the cash. And well, that's pretty much it. Uh, now I think, well, it should run every two hours. I'm not, I don't know the answer yet. I haven't, haven't tested it, but I'll tell you later. Uh, and for now, I'll just sit this, that's all. That's how you set up some GitHub actions to run a cron task. This is going to be very useful for me because I will not, I will not ever have to worry about this um, little script if it's working or not. And if it's not working, I'll probably get an email from GitHub and I'll be able to fix it. But I don't, I don't have to worry about any machines running this automatically. I don't have to run it on my own machine. It's going to be taken care of by GitHub. So this is fun. All right. Well, thank you for watching and I'll be back. Bye.